people walking. Today, there's not much to explain. We're simply going to give the possibility to our AIs to move during their turn. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, before jumping in the real subject of the video, we're just going to take a bit of time to create a new component in the grid. So I'm just going to go in my grid right here and open a BP grid. And in here, I'm going to create myself a new component for the pathfinding of our AI. So I'm just going to duplicate child actor grid pathfinding and rename it the child actor grid pathfinding underscore AI. That one is going to be specifically used by our AI and our AI only. The player is never going to use it. Technically, we could simply uh, continue using the grid pathfinding because the player is not going to be able to generate a path while the AI are playing but I still prefer creating myself a new component that way it's obvious which components are used for what so good we have a new component for it now we just have to go in the construction script right here and zoom and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did for the other grid pathfinding component so I'm just going to duplicate all that code right here and paste it over here I'm just going to reconnect everything like so and now we're gonna use the new component we created so let's replace that one by the new one just like that and we're going to create ourselves a new variable so let's duplicate grid pathfinding rename it grid pathfinding underscore AI and then we can simply replace the set right here perfect so now we have a specific uh, AI component is going to be used only by our AI. Good. So that's done. And now we can save and close the grid because we're done with it for today. And now for the AI movement, what are we going to do? But okay, I don't want to have to create 200 AI movement depending on how many units we have in the game. Instead, we're just going to have four different types of AI movement to cover most of the cases. So let's say we're going to have one that is going to uh, make the AI run away from the enemies and one that is going to make the AI go towards the enemies. And then we're going to have the same thing, but for the allies. So move towards the allies or run away from its allies. So let's go do that. I'm going to start by creating a enum to choose which uh, movement logic we want to use. So I'm going to go in my units, in my AI folder, and create myself a new enum. So blueprint enum, which I'm going to name uh, E underscore unit AI movement logic. And then we're going to open it to add the four movement logic we're going to code today. And here they are. So we have the move towards closest enemy move towards closest ally, move away from enemies, and move away from allies. And these are the four movement logic we're going to use today. So good, now we can save and close the enum, and now we have to decide which unit have which movement logic. And to do that, we're going to do it in the data table, like all the other stats of our units. So let's go in the utilities folder and create ourselves a new structure right here. So blueprint structure, which I'm going to name s underscore unit data underscore AI. And inside it, we don't have much to add today. We're just going to add the movement logic. So one simple variable of type e unit AI movement logic, and I named it the movement logic. Okay, good. Good. now we're done with this structure we can save and close it and we're going to go add it inside the main structure so s unit data so let's open that one create a new variable for it and name it ai it's going to be of type unit ai s unit data ai here we go now we can save and close the main structure now we're ready to go inside the data table to assign a movement logic for each of our units so let's go do that and here is what I decided for my unit. So first for the warrior, I wanted to move towards the closest enemy. And then I have the ranger, which is moving away from the enemies. My priest is moving towards the closest ally. My slime is moving towards the closest enemy. My chicken is moving away from its allies. And finally, the bat is moving away from the enemies. Here we go. So now all the states are decided for all of our units. And now we just have to use that information to code the AI movement. So let's close that data table. And then we're going to open the BP unit AI. So here it is, a BP unit AI, and we're going to start working on them. And here, before we jump in the logic, I just realized that the AI is not aware of which unit it's representing. So it's not going to be able to ask the unit to move on the grid because it doesn't know which units to ask to move. So uh, right now we are setting the combat system when we create the BP AI. We're going to do the same thing, but for the unit. So let's create a new variable for the unit. So I named it a unit and it is of type BP unit. And then I'm going to make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. So we can easily set it in the combat system when we spawn 
the unit AI and we're actually going to go do that right now. So let's go in the combat system right here, open the combat system and we're gonna go in the function set unit to use AI. That's where I was, so that's good. And right here we are spawning the BP unit AI. We are feeding it the combat system and we're going to also feed it the unit. So let's just refresh the spawn actor right here to have access to the unit right here. And then we can simply copy paste the unit and connect it like so. Perfect. So now the BP unit AI is aware of which unit it's representing and it's going to be able to ask him to move on the grid. Good. So now we can simply close the combat system because we're done with it for today. And now, since we're only going to work on the movement functions, not all of them, we're simply going to uh, stay organized and move them inside a new graph so we can focus on them. So I'm just going to create myself a new graph right here on the left. I'm going to name it end turn movement. So all the functions related to the movement of our units at the end of the turn. And now I'm going to go back in the AI flow just to cut all the functions we want to move. So I'm going to move these functions, all these nodes. Uh, so everything related to the AI movement at the end of the turn. So I'm just going to cut them all and then I'm going to go back in the end turn movement to paste them, just paste them right here. If Unreal doesn't seem IP and gives you a bunch of red nodes like this, you can simply right click on them and refresh the nodes and it should fix the issue. So now we can compile save. Unreal doesn't complain anymore and the code should still work as before because we simply moved the function inside another graph. We didn't change anything. And it's in this graph that we're going to do all the logic uh, related to the end turn movement. But but first, we're going to take a look at the design. What do we want to ask our unit to do? So first, okay, when we're deciding where to end our turn, uh, the first step is to get the reachable because we want to decide which reachable is the best one to end my turn. So we have to know which ones are available to us. So we're just going to ask the pathfinding, okay, give us the reachables. Uh, then we are going to wait until it's completed because it might take a little bit more time if the unit has a lot of movement point and we don't want to freeze the game for no reason. So we're just going going to wait. Maybe it's going to take two seconds, three seconds, or maybe just uh, 0.5 seconds. We don't know. So we're just going to wait. Once it's done, we're going to go to the next step, which is the analyze the reachable to find the best location. So that just makes sense. We have the bunch of reachables. Now we're just going to pick in one of them. Okay, that one's the best one. Pick that one. And then we're just going to find the path to that location. So we know where the unit starts. We found the best target tile. Just ask the path finding. Okay, give me the path to that tile. And then we're going to wait because it might take a little bit of time also. So let's just wait. Okay, that's good. We received the path. The pathfinding is completed. And now we can complete this step because this step is just to decide where to end the turn. It's not to ask the unit to move. So we're just going to complete the step, which means uh, calling the function decide where to end turn underscore done right here, which is just going to continue with the next step. The next step is to move the unit to the end turn location. And for this one, it's super simple. We just have to tell the unit to follow the path. And then we're going to wait until the unit has reached the last last tile of the path and once that's done well we can simply complete the step which means we're going to call the move to enter location underscore done right here okay good so now we know what's the design and we have to start working towards it so okay we're gonna start with the decide where to end turn so that's why i just moved these functions out of the way because we're gonna need a bit of room actually a fair chunk of room so actually i'm also going to move all these nodes out of the way we're going to call them a little bit later in the flow but for now we're not going to focus on them we're just going to start the logic right here at the beginning but now what's the first step? Okay, we're going to ask our unit to try to move on the grid. So I guess the first step is just to start by asking it, uh, can you move? Like, do you have enough movement point to go somewhere or you're just gonna stay there? Because if you don't have any movement point, we're not going to execute a bunch of logic to try to find where is the best place for you because you can't move. So obviously the best place for you is just to stay there. So let's start with that. I'm gonna start by asking my unit, okay, can you move? Uh, I'm just going to add myself a little branch right here and to know if the unit can move we're just going to check its movement point so do you have a more than zero movement point if so you're going to be able to move but otherwise uh, we don't have anything else to do so we're simply going to call the decide where to end turn uh, underscore done right here so i'm just going to move it right there and i'm going to connect it in the false because our decision is made the unit cannot move so just stay there and now that we decided that the unit has enough movement point to move, uh, we're going to have to ask him to move. But the first step, uh, according to the design, is to generate the reachables first because we want to calculate which one is the best. So we have to generate them first. So uh, to do that, we're going to go through the pathfinding, which is the BP grid the pathfinding right here that we created at the beginning of the video. So in the grid, we are going to use the grid pathfinding AI. And in this case, we need to bind ourselves to the callback, uh, which is going to be called every time the pathfinding gets complete. 
connected so we're able to receive the information back. So here it is, I'm going to bind myself to the unpathfinding completed right here. And since this is for the reachable for my end turn, I'm going to name my event uncompleted underscore end turn the reachable right here. And actually, we're going to reuse the grid pathfinding a bunch of times today. So I'm just going to collapse it into a function because it's pretty annoying to do combat system grid grid pathfinding. So I'm just going to do a right click collapse to function instead. I named it get pathfinding. I renamed the output variable to pathfinding and I also made it pure. So now I can just simply move it here. Here we go. That's way cleaner. And now that the callback is set up, we can simply ask the pathfinding to generate the reachables for us. So I'm just going to move on the right right here and call the find path function inside the pathfinding. So same as usual, we're going to return the reachable. So I'm checking the little checkbox right here. I'm keeping the delay and the max millisecond because I don't want the game to freeze. And then I'm also keeping the target to minus 999 because the target doesn't matter in this case since it's just going to be for the reachables. For the start index, it's going to be the index of the current unit. So uh, we're going to start where the unit is on the grid and for all the other settings we're going to feed them from the unit data so from the unit structure we're simply going to feed okay can the unit move in diagonal which are the valid tile type and also how many movement point the current unit currently has and then the pathfinding is going to do its job it's going to take a little bit of time and once it's done it's going to call it this event right here because it's connected to the callback so uh, we are going to receive the reachables right here so we can continue the flow and analyze all of them to decide which one is the best one. But before doing the analyze, I'm just going to unbind myself from the callback first. That way, the next time we're going to call the find path, it's not going to call this event right here. It's going to call another event if we want to, because I know we're going to reuse the find path function somewhere else in the code, because, well, we have to ask the unit to follow a path. So we're going to re ask the pathfinding later on, okay, give me the real path this time, not only the reachables, and we don't want it to call this function. We want to call it another function. And that's why we have to make sure to unbind ourselves, that otherwise, it's going to interfere with the flow because this function right here is going to also be called when we find the path for the unit. And now it's time to analyze those reachables but since we're gonna need a bit of code I'm just going to create myself a reroute node to right click and then I can collapse to a function so it's creating my function for me. I can rename it to find best index in reachables and connect it like so. Now I can also rename the input pin for reachables so it makes a little bit more sense and then I'm going to also need an output which is going to be the best index in the reachable so it's going to be an int point. Here we go. And we're not actually going to do the logic of the function just yet we're gonna keep focusing on the flow and once we're done we're gonna come back to finish the whole process with this function because it's pretty complicated so let's not think about it for now and we're just going to assume that okay we found an awesome index we have it right here and now we can use it to find the path and ask our unit to move so here we go we have our index we can use it and we're going to do another find path. We're going to ask the pathfinding, okay, find the path to that target now. Uh, but first, we have to bind ourselves to the callback and also unbind ourselves once we're done. So let's do it right here. Here we go. So we're binding ourselves to the same exact callback when unpathfinding completed. But this time, it's going to call this event instead of that one. It's going to call this new event, which I name uncompleted underscore and turn path because that's the path. That's not the reachable. So we wanted to, ca to call this event, not the previous one. So that's why we unbind the previous one right here and that's why we're also going to unbind this one once we're done with it so we are binding ourselves and then unbinding ourselves and now we're ready to call a find path to ask the pathfinding to give us the path we want to follow. So I'm just going to move on the right, right here, and we're going to call the find path right there. So uh, in the pathfinding, we call the find path. Uh, same thing for the start, we're going to use the index of the unit, and same thing for all the other variables, we're going to use the variables of the unit. Here we go. This time we're making sure that we're not checking the reachables because we want the real path, we don't want the reachables. We're going to keep the same delay and max milliseconds. And finally, for the target, we're going to use the index we just received from the function right there. Here we go. So now we are asking the pathfinding to give us the path we want to ask the unit to follow. And once it's done calculating it, we're just going to continue the flow right here. But we don't actually have much to do right here because this step is done. We decided where we wanted to go and then we found the path to that location. So now we can simply call the decide where to end turn underscore done because we're done with it. But actually it's not that simple because we have the path here. We want to use that path. We want to feed it to the unit and ask it to follow that path. So what I'm going to do is just feed it to the decide where to end turn done as a return value, a kind of return value. So the next step can use it to move the unit. So let's 
where this event is, it's right here, and just add the path as an input. So an array of endpoint, which is going to be the path we want to use to move the unit. And also this event right here is going to need that path because that's the event that's gonna actually move, in, move the unit. So let's add it to that one too. So here it is, I have my path. And while we're here, we're simply going to connect them both together to feed the information. Okay, good, now we can compile. Okay, we have a few issues to fix. Uh, first, uh, and we're gonna go at the end where we were feeding the path because right now we're not feeding it and that's why it's complaining. So we can simply connect the path like so. Here we go, now the information is going through the next step. So that's good. And now if we compile, I think there's an issue right here because uh, the function needs to receive something as an input, otherwise it doesn't compile. So let's just feed it an empty array because we don't want the unit to move. Uh, there's no path to follow right here because the unit doesn't have any movement point. So let's just feed it an empty array. And good, we're done with the part of the logic that tells us uh, where we want the unit to go. Now we just have to ask the unit to move. And yeah, that's a fair chunk of code. And as I said, it's pretty ugly. So that's why I moved it into a different graph. That way it's not going to bother us when we do the next few videos. Okay, good. Now it's just time to ask the unit to move uh, because we have the path and we need to ask him to move and follow that path. So we're going to focus on this event now, the move to enter location. And actually here before starting the process, I'm just going to check if the path has any elements in it. So if the length of the path is greater than zero, it means that the unit needs to move and we're going to uh, proceed with the step. Otherwise, we're simply going to call the intern done. So I'm just going to move this right here. Here we go. So move to intern location done because, well, we don't have any path to follow. So we're just going to end the step right here. But in the case that we receive the path that is not empty, we want to use it to move the unit on the grid. So let's ask the unit, okay, follow that path. But first, before doing that, we have to bind ourselves to the callback that is going to be called when the unit is done walking because we want to be able to proceed to the next step once that happens. So let's bind ourselves to the on unit finished walking right here. So on the unit, bind ourselves, it's going to call this event once the unit is done walking on the grid. But as usual, we're going to also unbind ourselves as soon as the event is called because we only want to use it once. We don't want to use it multiple times. So the unit is done walking, it's going to call this event Event, which we are then going to unbind so it doesn't break anything later on. Okay, good. So now the callback is set up properly. We just have to ask the unit to move on the grid. So let's ask the combat system to move the unit, feeding it the unit and the path it has to follow. The path is coming from the beginning, obviously. And once that's done, once the unit is done walking, we can proceed to the next step. So in this event right here, which is going to be called, we're simply going to call the function move to enter location done because we're done. The unit just finished walking and we're done. We don't have anything else to do after that. So good. Okay, now the flow is completed. It should work, uh, but we're not able to test it yet because we never coded the find best index in reachables right here. But since I want to be able to test the flow before doing all the logic in that function, I'm just going to add a little something to be able to test it. And the little something is actually just to take any random index in the reachable and ask the unit to go there. It's not going to make sense. The unit's gonna go probably in a random location that doesn't make sense at all, but at least it should be good enough to test the flow. Here we go. So now I have my warrior and then I have three units that are AI. So now if I end my turn, they should move. Okay. Okay. The chicken found a place to go and it moved and we can see that, yeah. Uh, the uh, states seem to work on the left here. We can see that they are looking for a location where to go and then they are moving. So uh, we can see it slowly. Here we go, it's looking for it. Ah, they don't find anything. Okay, next one. Looking for location, they don't find anything. Okay, that's weird. Okay, next one, two, 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 fine. Okay, found the location, it moved over there. And then the next one, two, 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 two. Okay, that one moved. Here we go. Okay, now it's a bit slow. We can make it faster. But yeah, now the units are moving on the grid in random locations. Good. Okay, so we're sure that the flow is working. Now we just have to uh, decide uh, the best location we want to move the unit, not move it randomly. Okay. I'm finally back. It's been a week since I started recording this video and now it's time to finish it. Last time I went to bed telling myself, eh, it's fine. I'll finish a video tomorrow morning. Uh, I woke up really sick and then I had a deadline for work, so I had to do that. And then there was Slime Rancher 2 that came up. And yeah, so now we're one week later. I don't remember what we did last week, so I hope it's gonna go well. So let's get back to it. 
Okay, so the next step is to filter the reachable to find which index is the best index for the unit to ask it to move to that tile. So to filter the reachable, we're gonna use the enum right here that we created at the beginning. And the first thing we have is the move towards the closest enemy. So in this one, we want to move towards the closest enemy. So we need to know where are the enemies on the grid. And same thing here for the allies, we need to know where are the allies on the grid. And then so we have the move towards closest enemy, closest ally and then we have move away from enemies and move away from allies so in those cases we need to know uh, where is the, the tile that is the furthest away from those uh, elements on the grid so either the enemies or the allies and for the first two we need to know which tile is the closest to either the enemy or the ally so we need four elements we need uh, the allies on the grid the enemies on the grid which tiles are the closest so a function to determine which tile is the closest and also a tile that is the furthest away from the enemies and the allies. So we need four functions and we're going to start with that. So let's go back in the BP unit AI and let's create ourselves four functions. So first function get ally units. I'm not going to add any inputs and outputs for now. I'm just going to create the functions. So we have the function that gives us all the allies units on the grid. Then another function get enemy units. So all the units that are enemies. So here we go. We have the two functions for that and then we need uh, the two other functions. So another function for find the closest index. So that one is going to give us the closest index index to a specific target that we are going to give it and then we have one last function find for test index that one we're going to specify it a list of index and then it's going to return us which index in those indexes is the far test. Here we go. So now we have to code all those four functions before we are able to finish this one. So let's go in the get ally units first. I'm going to start with this one right here. And let's start with the inputs and outputs. So here at the beginning, I have the include self boolean right here on the right, because I want to uh, specify the function if uh, I want to either include the unit I'm controlling, so the unit right here or not. So maybe it's possible that we want to include it and it's possible that we don't. Uh, for the pathfinding, we probably don't want to include it, but uh, in the case that we need it in the future, I added the boolean right here. And then for the return, I'm simply returning all the units I find in this function. So here I have a mapping of int point to be BP units. Uh, the reason I'm using a mapping is just because it's going to be uh, simpler for us uh, later on when we want to uh, know which unit is on which tile. It's just because it's going to make our life a little bit simpler. So that's why I'm returning a mapping right here instead of an array of BP unit. And actually, I'm also going to promote this into a local variable right here. So new local variable that I named RET. So that way it's going to be easier for us to just add units inside the mapping in the local variable and then return it at the end. And now it's time to process the units. So the first step is to take all the units that are in the same team as the current unit we're controlling because we want to have the allies. So only the units that are in our team. So, okay, we have them right here. We just have to set them into an array right here. So two array, we're converting them. That way we can easily loop through all of them because we want to make a few checks before returning them at the end right here. But before doing the checks, we just have to promote this into a new local variable right here and that I have on the left right here that I named the U because I already have a unit variable in my blueprint. So I don't want to reuse the same name. So here it is. I have my new variable U for my new unit that I'm looping through. And now I'm just going to move on the right a little bit right here. And for the first check, we're simply going to check, okay, is the unit alive? Because we don't want to return the unit at the end if the unit is dead, because we are not interested in that one. So let's skip that one if it's dead, but otherwise we're just going to uh, continue with the flow. And the second and last check we have to do is simply to make sure that we are not returning self if we don't want it. So in this case, uh, if the unit is not equal to self, okay, we always want to return these ones. So that's good. Or if we want to include self, okay, we're just going to continue with the flow. So uh, it's just going to filter out the self unit if we don't want it. And now that we're sure that we want the unit, we just have to add it inside the mapping. So the RET variable right here, we just do an add on it, passing in the unit and its index. That way we are going to return all the units in our team that are alive on the grid and that are equal to self if we want to return self. And that's it for this function. Now it's time to go process the enemy units. And now for the inputs. Uh, for this one, I decided to feed it an array of integer. That way we can specify which team index we want to use for this function. So that way we'll be able to use this function only to retrieve the units that are part of the teams we want to use. So uh, let's say we want to retrieve all the units from the team uh, 0, 1, and 2. Well, we can simply specify the indexes 0, 1, and 2. Or maybe we just want the units from the unit 2. 
that's uh, just going to be useful because in my game I have more than two teams. I can have three, four, five, ten teams if I want to. So uh, this index is going to be very useful if we want to filter out the team indexes from the beginning. So here they are, I can specify the team indexes and at the end I'm simply returning a mapping of units the same way we did for the previous function and I've also created myself my local variable RET that are returning at the end. And now the first step is to decide which team indexes we want to use. So first let's check, okay, did we receive a specific team indexes as input? Because if we receive them, well, we want to use them. Otherwise, we're not going to use them. We're just going to return all the enemies that are in combat. Because I think it makes sense. If we are not specifying any indexes, we're just going to return everything. Like all the units from all the teams. That makes sense. So here we go, uh, if I'm receiving any team indexes as input, I'm just going to promote them into a new local variable right here that I named teams. This is the variable we're gonna use for the rest of the function. So uh, we're just going to uh, copy this variable into that new variable that way we know, uh, okay, these are the teams we want to use for this function. Okay, so that was in the case that we received the specific team indexes as input, but if we don't, it's going to be false right here. And what we're gonna do is simply take all the teams that are currently in combat. So all of them, because we are not interested in any specific teams, so we want any teams, so all of them. Okay, so now I have my teams uh, variable. I'm just going to do a little remove on it to filter out the current team index because we don't want any allies in this uh, return. We don't want the get enemy units function to return any allies. So that's why right here, I'm just removing the current units team index. That way we're not going to process any allied unit. Now it's time for the processing part. And what we're going to do is simply going to uh, loop through all the teams because we want to process all the teams uh, and then all the units that are currently in those teams. So let's start by the teams and then we're going to process all the units. And that's why I'm just going to move on the right a little bit right here to get all the units that are in the team that I'm looping through. So right now I'm looping through a team that is my array element. And then I can take all the units in that team to loop through all of them also. So I'm just going to do a two array like we did in the previous function and then we can simply loop through all of them and same thing as the previous function I'm just going to promote it to a local variable that I named the U. Okay now I'm just going to continue on the right and then we just have to do the same check okay is the unit alive and if so I'm just going to add it inside my mapping same thing we did with the previous function so here we go now we're just going to loop through all the units that are in all the teams that we decided to process so all the units uh, from the beginning, either the specific indexes or all of them. And then we're going to loop through all, of, through all of them, return only the ones that are alive and then return them at the end of the function. Good. So that's it for the get enemy units. We can go to the find closest index now. Okay, so for the inputs, we have two array of endpoints. So we have the reachable, so where the unit can go on the grid, and then we have the possible targets, so where we want to attract the unit on the grid. So let's say we have a bunch of enemies over there that we want to go towards. Uh, we're just going to take the reachable of the current unit. We're going to compare these reachable with uh, the uh, indexes of the enemies that are over there, and we're going to uh, attract the unit towards these indexes. So that's why we have the targets right here, and we're going to use them to uh, compare compare with the reachable to see which one is the best one and then at the end we are returning an endpoint uh, which is the best index so right here I have the index and I've also promoted it inside a local variable that I name RET as usual. And actually, we're also going to need another local variable, an integer this time, which is going to be the smallest distance uh, that we found. So if we found uh, that the closest distance between me and uh, the target, uh, let's say five, is only two uh, tile, that might be the smallest distance, unless we find someone else that is, uh, let's say, at one tile distance instead of two. So that's why right here we're going to keep track of which tile is the closest, and that's the target we're going to use. And also by default, I'm setting into 999999, a huge number. That way it's sure, 100% sure that we are going to find a tile that is closer than that huge value that we set as default. And now it's time to find which tile is the closest between the reachable and the possible target. So here they are. We have the reachable and the targets and we're going to loop through all of them. So let's do that. I'm going to start by looping through all my reachable. Here we go. And then promote that into a local variable. So it's easier to reuse later on. And I'm going to do the same thing for the 
the possible targets. So I'm looping through all the possible targets and I'm promoting that into a new local variable right here on the left. Good. So now we have the reachable and the target. We just have to compare them together to see, okay, what is the distance between those two tiles? And then we're going to say, okay, uh, are you the smallest distance or not? But let's start by comparing the distance first. So I'm just going to move on the right right here to do the comparison and I'm doing it like that. Here we go. Okay. That's a big chunk of code, but it's actually not that difficult. We're just taking the distance, so the minimum distance between two tiles, between the reachable and the target, so we're comparing them. We're just checking, okay, what's the distance between you two? Uh, also, I'm just feeding the can move diagonally just so uh, the result makes a little bit more sense. So here they are. We are comparing those two distances, and then I'm just going to set that into a new local variable that I have right here, my new distance which is the new distance we have to work with. This is the distance between the reachable and the target. And we have to check, okay, is this distance uh, smaller than the current distance minimum that we found the current smallest distance, which is the smallest distance right here. So we're just going to simply check, okay, are you smaller than the other one? Is the new distance uh, smaller than the smallest distance? If so, well, that's, you are the new smallest distance because you're smaller than the smallest so you're the new smallest and that's why right here on the right we're just going to move on the right a little bit and then we're just going to start by setting the return value because we found a reachable that is smallest than the current smallest so we want to use that one instead we're replacing the current return by that new reachable and then we're simply going to update the smallest distance because we found a new smallest distance we want to make sure to update the smallest distance here we go now if we compile and that function so should work so uh, we're looping through all the tiles all the reachables and all the targets we're comparing their distances together and if uh, the new distance is smaller than the current distance we're just going to replace it over and over and over until we find the real the real smallest distance in all those tiles here we go and now at the end right here we're simply going to return the smallest index because that's what the function wants to do Good. Okay. So that was uh, for the find closest index. Now we have to do the last function, which is the find farthest index. For the inputs, same thing. We have two arrays of in point as input. So we have the reachables and we have the indexes to avoid, which are going to be the indexes of, let's say, the enemy units that are on the grid. So we have all the enemy units. We have all those indexes. We want to avoid all of them at once. So, so we're going to compare all the reachables with all those uh, indexes where the units, enemy units are. And we're going to decide, okay, which tile is the best, which tile is the most far away from all of them. So that's what we're going to try to do. And as for the return, well, uh, same thing as before, we have the index we want to return and I promoted it inside a new local variable that I named ret. And then I'm also going to create myself a new other local variable, an integer this time, same thing as before, but this one is going to be for the biggest distance. So which tile is the furthest away from all those uh, indexes to avoid? And by default, I'm setting it to a super negative value. So minus 99, minus 99, super small. That way it's sure that we're going to find a tile that is greater than that uh, distance because that distance is negative it doesn't exist so it, it should not be possible to have a tile that is uh, smaller than minus 99. Anyway it's time to start the process so okay first step is to loop through all the reachable again so take all the reachable loop through all of them and promote that into a local variable that way it's going to be simpler to reuse but this time there's a little thing different. I'm just going to initialize the new distance right here. I have the new distance and it is a huge value. So uh, by default, I'm deciding that I found a tile that is super far and then I'm going to invert that as soon as I find a tile that is closer. Uh, that's just because we're going to compare all the reachable at once. Uh, I mean, all the uh, indexes to avoid at once. So that's why I'm initializing my value right here. And then we can loop through all the indexes to avoid to process them. So I'm just going to take all my indexes to avoid. I'm just going to create myself my new local variable. And then we're going to move on the right to do the comparison. So here it is. I'm just taking the distance between the reachable and the index to avoid as before. So we take the distance between those but this time there's a little twist again because we want to use the new distance we used uh, we initialized at the beginning so we have the new distance that is super big right now we're going to do a min a minimum between uh, the minimum cost and the new distance that way it's just going to return us it's going to pick it's going to pick either this value or that value depending which one is the smallest by default it should be that one for the first iteration and then it's going to change depending if we find the first
further or closer tile. But yeah, the minimum is going to pick between those two, depending which one is the smallest, and then we can uh, simply reset not new distance. So uh, that way it's going to reuse the new distance uh, over and over and over and just keep the one that is the closest. And then once we're done processing all the indexes to avoid and updating our new distance to make sure that we found only the smallest in the new distance, we're simply going to compare the new distance with the biggest distance. Okay, is the new distance bigger than the biggest distance? If so, well, that's the tile we want to go to. We want to go to the tile that is the further away of all the other tiles. So uh, let's just take the reachable and put it inside the, the return uh, to be able to return it at the end. And we're also going to re-update the biggest distance because we found a new biggest distance. Uh, let's say it was five, now it's six, then seven, then eight. Here we go. So now we found the new biggest distance and we're going to go towards there. And then for the next iteration, it's just going to start again. So uh, go to the next reachable, reset the new distance because we want to start the countdown again to make sure that the new distance is always up to date. Then we're going to loop through all the indexes to avoid. And in all those indexes, we're only going to keep the one that is the closest to the reachable because that's what's going to determine, uh, okay, that's the distance we want to use for our comparison at the end, which is the one right here. So if the new distance is bigger than the biggest distance, blah, 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 blah. So here we go. So now we have all the four functions we needed and it's now time to do the real function. So find best index in reachables. And actually the first thing I'm going to do is just delete all that because we don't need it. And for the logic, it's going to be in two steps. Uh, we're first going to check on the grid and find all the allies or enemies units that are currently on the grid, depending on what we want. Uh, this is based on the enum that we have right here. So either we want the enemies or the allies. So that's going to be the first step. And then the second step is to either move towards or away of those units. So uh, depending on the enum, once again, we're going to check, okay, do we want to move towards or move away? So that's what uh, we are going to do we're gonna do these two steps and since we have two steps well let's start with a sequence because there's two pin two steps perfect that fits together and those steps are based on the movement logic so let's get the movement logic of the ai here we go we have the movement logic and we are ready to process it so here we go i have my movement logic and the first thing i'm gonna do is a switch so here i'm going to decide okay do we want the enemies or the allies so i'm just going to take all the pins that are related to the enemies and connect them together and do the same thing for the allies. So I have my enemies right here and my allies right here. And for those two uh, categories of uh, units, we have a different function to call. So we have the get ally units and the get enemy units. We're gonna start with the enemy because that's the pin that we have above right here. So get the enemy units for the specific team indexes. In my case, I don't really care right now. So I'm just going to feed it an empty array. So it's going to use all the enemies that are on the grid independently of their team index. So that's good. I'm just going to have all the enemies I have on my grid and then the thing I'm gonna do is just to promote that into a new local variable. So I'm gonna take my units, take the keys to have only the indexes. I don't really care about the units right now. So I'm just going to take the keys and promote that into a local variable enemies or allies right here. So we have the array that contains all the indexes of all the enemies that are on my grid right now because this is the enemy branch, but we're gonna do the same thing for the allies. So right here, I'm gonna call the new function for the ally. So get ally units. In this case, I don't want to include myself because I don't want to affect my pathfinding. It will not make sense in this case. And then I just have to set those units inside the same local variable. So here we go. I have either my enemies or my allies, and we're going to reuse that variable for the second step. And it's time to do the second step. So here we go in the step one. Let's do another switch, but this time we're going to connect either move towards or move away, depending on what we want based on the movement logic. So let's connect them together. I'm going to start by connecting the moves towards together like that. And and then move away like that. So we have uh, the enemies or the allies, then we're just going to decide, okay, we want to move away or towards them. And to do that, well, okay, this is moving towards the closest enemy. So I'm just going to take the function, find closest index. I'm feeding it the reachable right here and the enemies or allies, which are the targets. So either the enemies or the allies, we want to move towards them. So we can just uh, call the find closest index right here. It's returning us uh, the index we want to use and that's it. 
the function is done we found the index we want to use for that unit ai so let's return it right here and now we just have to do the last little category right here which is moving away from these enemies or allies so we can simply call the find for test index once again feeding it the reachables and the enemies or allies but this time is to avoid and then we're just going to return that as output because we found the tile we want to use here we go now we can compile save and i think we're done so let's go see in the game how it looks i'm just going to add a bunch of ais of all the unit types to make sure that it works here we go so here i have all my units moving on the grid and they all have some kind of different behavior depending on the unit so uh, we can see that the chickens are running away from everything uh, the uh, warriors are getting closer to the enemies and uh, the priests are getting closer to their allies and the chickens are running away once again so yeah we can see that all the units have some kind of different behavior and we can set the logic seem to work uh, it's not awesome yet because the units aren't attacking each other right now they are just moving around on the grid which is fine i mean it's good but it's not as good as if as if they were killing each other but that's what we're gonna do in the next video but not in this one because it's it's been a while already and I'm pretty sure you want to see that video so I'm just going to upload it and then we're gonna start working on the next one so I'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye